Hi, how are you all doing? Welcome in. I'm here again with my Cora. Hi. And today we are going to be continuing our lesson previously to make some VTuber models. Yes. My Cora, are you excited to start another live 2D lesson? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad to hear you're ready to learn. Let's start with this. How to make a VTuber live 2D Cubism part two. Just in case if anyone had missed the previous stream when I had done this, I do have a free file that all of you can download. You can either scan this QR code or you can click the link in the description down below to download base John and you can kind of move along with the lesson with us. I had already provided everything that we had learned in lesson one in this. So you don't have to like, you know, be afraid, be like, oh no, I missed out on like Everything that I'm leaving behind. No, it's okay. I like uploaded all that on there. So you're welcome to download it. And first things first, I would like to say that this stream is sponsored by Live2D Cubism. So I want to say thank you so much to our sponsor for this. And yeah, Ooh. we'll yeah. We'll move along um as quickly as we can since I know we have a lot to cover today. <laughs> so today we are going to be learning, or well, I will I'll be explaining what X and Y and Z means in live 2 d and how it's used in other applications such as like VTube Studio. You know, the stuff that's very relevant to all of you who are trying to learn. Um, I'm also going to show you how to create some custom mesh for eye rigging as well as demonstrate the basics of rigging angle Z, body Z, and eye blinking. So what is X, Y, and Z for live 2 d and how is it used in other applications? So let's start with the basics, okay? As you can see over here, you might see this face angle X and param angle X. These are the inputs and outputs off of the tracking software that you're using to control your uh, VTuber model. So right now, as I am animated and stuff, I am using a special program called VTube Studio and it is capturing my face movements. And it's taking all the data based off of how my face is moving and then inputting that to my model. And so that's where the whole X, Y, and Z parameters come into play. When you're using live 2 d Cubism, we have, I'm sure you remember those parameters where we had angle X, angle Y, and angle Z. Whatever we end up rigging for those will be translated into like whatever program you're going to be using later on, whether that's V2 Studio or other like video game applications you're going to be using. It's just data. It's information to say, hey, where is your face or what do you want these inputs to be? Okay, this is what's going to happen up on screen then. That's kind of how, uh, does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know why this is really difficult to explain. I feel like it's one of those things that once I show you the example here, you kind of understand. Like, for example, mm -hmm. this is how angle X, Y, and Z are used when you're streaming with your VTuber avatar. Like, as you can see here, I have left and right. That's angle X. I'm going up and down. That's angle Y. And I'm doing a head tilt and that's angle Z. And you can see mm -hmm. how like my body and my head all move together at once because it's taking all that data of just my face. That's it. So cool, though. Yeah, it's a lot of complicated math. Like if I go back, you see these numbers here, the input and output. This is like the application determining where my face position is and then how my model <laughs> should be reacting based off of those inputs, which you can like all set in here and stuff. But don't worry about this too, too much. OK, I don't want to like overwhelm okay. you. This is just to kind of understand the the concept of like, oh, that's how it, that, that's how my VTuber model moves. Oh, all right. So first thing is first, Um, we are ba -ba -ba -ba. we already auto generated the mesh for all of this. The ones that we're going to redo are going to be the upper lid, um, the side eyelash, the iris itself and the bottom lash, the I called it like bottom lid. So why don't we start with the main eyelash? So you want to select the main eyelash by clicking the object itself in the view area, or you can go under the deformer tab and go all the way down to where we had the little warp and you can click on it right here. Okay, so now you can select the main eyelash. And now we're going to go to this up here where it says manual mesh edit because this one was the auto. We're going to click on the manual one. And now I'm going to be honest, the auto mesh did a pretty good job at, at making this because some, I don't know, back in the day when I first started doing live 2D, it, you know, for some reason, the main eyelash just never like formed properly. So I, I always just got kind of used. It also depends on the art style, but I had just become accustomed to making it manually myself. And so we're actually going to make it from scratch. Okay. 
So a good rule of thumb when you're making like your mesh is that you want to make sure you have some space because if you have a way too close, it can kind of start clipping because you see how there's this little bit of a blur. Like you want to make sure you're not going to have any clipping. So you want to have enough space. I typically like to go like an inch out when making my mesh. Okay. I mean, honestly, you could probably go a little bit farther than that too. It doesn't really matter. But I like to start off with right at the point that is drawn over here. And I like to make just a line all the way down here. So mm -hmm. you're not the click on each little point. And you can try you to match. It. You can try to match my spacing. It, okay. It's not the end of the world on how it ends up getting spaced. Uh, especially since mm -hmm. this is like a big piece. And okay. yeah, you can just try to try your best. It, it's okay if like it doesn't look exactly like mine. I just like to make it just a, a little bit of a, of a part. Okay, so when we're making the points, we don't want them to look like this, where it's matching points like this, because what happens? Like, yes, they make I... they make triangles, but that looks awful, and it's yeah, <laughs> and like it's like a a square. It's how I... yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's how I drew teeth on my drawings when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So my rule of thumb that I was taught way back was. You want to go in between the spaces, the points that you had made. So for mm -hmm. this one, I would want to go in between this and then in between this while still following the the outer lining of this. So in between here, in between here, and so on. And now we're going to hit auto connect. And Boop. look at that. I'm going to hit the selection tool and I am going to connect these two points because there is a tiny bit of the object that is sticking out and I don't want that. Protect your object. All right. And there you go. You've created your own manual mesh. Good job, Cora. Oh, I did it. Yeah. Now that we're done with this, we're going to hit the little check mark right here. Yes. Yeah, so now you What's have so nice pretty? mesh. Now compare that one to this over here. It's not that different, but you know, yeah. it, it's not that different. It's not that different. Well, there is some differences. We have like a main line right here in the middle. Whereas this mm -hmm. one, it does it like this and then this, which is fine. You could, we could have meshed it like this. There's a reason why we're not, though, because like I said earlier, this example file here, when I went to go do the eye blink, it did not want to work well with me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it is the default one that that I had auto mesh. So, yeah, I'm hoping now when we go to do this, it's going to play a little nicer and you'll see why you're going to see how I had this main line here. There's a reason for that, and it's going to have to do with when we start doing the eye close. So now we can move on to the next part, hey. which is gonna be some actual rigging. So you might be wondering, how come we're not, how come we're not just gonna start doing the eye close just yet? Because I feel like I wanna save that for the end because rigging angle Z and body Z is not gonna take long at all. So I wanna get through this really quickly. Okay, rigging angle Z. This is not position Z where it's going from closer to far apart. We actually don't have to worry about any of that. That gets taken care of with your um, your webcam or your phone within like an application like VTube Studio. It's just measuring, oh, how far and how close are your face? We actually don't have to worry about that. There are things that we could do in the future for more advanced techniques on how the model responds based off of how close or how far your face is, as, as well as like the position of X and Y. We do not need to worry about any of that. That is way more advanced. Um, we are solely focused on tilting your head like actually tilting it from side to side that's what angle z is this is how we do it so we're gonna go selecting the face rotation deformer that we had made in the previous lesson you know this one not the neck yeah. one the face one yeah we're gonna go to face the little folders that we had made under our um, parameter face. palette and we're gonna click angle z which it looks like i had done that so okay so we're gonna click on angle Z, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna select these three little green dots up here, because this is gonna add three key forms. A single dot is a key. So right here, it starts off in the middle. This is your default pose, that which is why she's just like this. Now if I click on the right one, and by the way, I'm clicking on them not with my left click. You do not wanna do that. You wanna click on it with your, um, your right mouse click, because it snaps it. Otherwise, if I clicked on it with my left, I can't tell if I'm actually selecting that point or not. So you want to... Oh, I see. Yeah, you want to click on it with 
the right mouse click so it snaps to it and you know it's highlighted. Gotcha. And now, now that we're over here, we can either take this and like tilt it like that. Mm -hmm. Or because this is an angle rotation, def because this is a rotation deformer, we can actually just use numbers over here, the little angle in the inspector palette. And we can just type in how far we want it to tilt. I'm going to okay. select 15 and then I'm going to press enter. And I like that. Now we can go over to the other side of it and right click that. See how it resets because we haven't moved it. We haven't set any. We haven't set the key yet. Exactly. Yes. Animations, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do negative 15 because that's the opposite. Now there's another way to, uh, sorry. Mm -mm. There's another way to do this too. So I'm going to delete these and redo it. Let's say I have this at 15. Now if I'm on this point here, I can go up to this little hamburger sign and I can click on reflect motion and it's going to reflect it horizontally. If I were to press OK, it just took the movement and reflected it horizontally, which means it flipped it. So oh. yeah, that's another way to do it. So that way you don't have to manually reset it and it's faster. You're going to use, we're, we're going to use that quite often in uh, with rigging for certain stuff. Makes it faster. All right. There's a couple of different ways to rig the body Z. I know some people call it Z. I understand like that. That seems to be a popular terminology. I don't call it that. I just call it Z instead of Z. I, I don't know. I, I think it's like an accent thing or something, but I just call it Z. So in case if anyone's wondering, why isn't she calling it Z? I, I don't call it Z. It's just my personal preference. <laughs> so there's two ways to rig body Z. This is option one where remember those that warp deformer that we had made in the beginning. You can actually like use that to um, do like a body tilt where the body's actually tilting from the side. I'm gonna be honest. I hate this method because I feel like it takes a lot of time <laughs> using the warp deformer. So I came up with these. Uh, well, I didn't come up with it. There's a second option that I like to do, which involves a rotation deformer. It's a lot faster. It's um rotation and warp. You still have to use a warp deformer that we had made with the legs. Mm -hmm. And so this is the option that I prefer to use. Um, I I will say the after this lesson is over, I will include lesson two in all of this where I had done um the warp deformer version and the rotation deformer version. So how we're going to do this one is we are going to um, go over to where our body warp Z is. So our body warp Z right here, we're going to click on this one and we're going to make a new deformer and we're going to name this body Z. Sorry, not a warp deformer, a rotations deformer. We're going to make a rotations deformer. Now we need this to go all the way down to the belly button. So we have to hold down control and shift because we want it to go down linear all the way down to where you think the belly button is. The grid really helps. <laughs> And yeah, look at this. Ah, so now we're going to go over to the parameter palette. We're going to click on the body folder that we had made. And then we're going to go on to body Z. Mm -hmm. Click on the three green dots. The reason why we're doing three is because this is the neutral default base. And we have, you know, body tilt right and Wait. body tilt left. Mm, I see. And you will use two dots for some stuff. It just depends on what what it's going to be. We're going to use it for eye blink. So now we have three dots. I'm going to right click this. Make sure this is my default position. Now I'm going to move over here and right click it. And I'm going to use the angle part up here because I don't want to drag it around. I'm going to do, let's see what 15 looks like. Okay. Did I do that for this one? I don't remember which one I went with. I did do 15. So I could just do 10 if I don't want it to be that strong. Like mm -hmm. if I want to do 10, it's like a, you know, a slight tilt kind of depends on the model depends on like what movements you want to achieve um because she's a little chibi we can really deform chibi models because they're so <laughs> they're so pudgy and they're just so pudgy and stuff so we can really <laughs> deform them so i'm gonna go all in and do 15 we're gonna make it super exaggerated yeah and so you'll notice here i didn't actually move the body over at all i kind of kept it locked in place if we wanted to if we really wanted to make it super exaggerated not only can we do this angle we could actually take this by holding the, like by clicking this part 
and using shift and then actually moving it over. You can either make it look, you know, nice like this where it's just the body, but that looks kind of sus, but we can move it all the way over like this if I really uh -huh. want to get a lean in. I don't really want to do that though. I want to keep it nice and simple for us. I'm going to control Z that. Yeah. We're just going to focus on moving it like this because well i guess actually we could we could move it just a little bit because it makes warping the legs a little bit easier we'll move it a little bit like that so that way she moves a little bit eh, i think we will move it over a bit more we, we will move it over to where the legs are a little bit yeah so that way it's a little broken right here but it's fine because we're about to fix that okay so now at this position we're now going to select the lower body warp z this is for the legs. Okay. And we're going to right click on the center here. And we're going to select the three dots. And then we're going to right click over here to snap it. And now we're going to start actually manipulating this. So I see that Cora's warp uh, deformer looks like this. So if you go over to the inspector palette where it says Bezier divisions number, it says two by two. We're actually going to make it mm -hmm. two by three. And you see how these little green little thingies, I, I call a lot of stuff thingies. <laughs> <laughs> the, they're the Bezier uh, divisions. What Bezier divisions do is it controls. It's a little hard to see with the grid. So let me take this off. What the Bezier divisions does is it controls a range of points over here. So I can either manipulate it like this, where it's doing a bunch of different points compared to doing one singular point. Oh, I see. Yes. It's a good way to get a nice smooth movement for um, certain sections of your art mesh. So, and because I selected this, how it's purple right now, that means I'm currently, I'm about to deform that. So I don't want that to happen. So I'll just click off of that and re-click this to reset that. Okay. So now we're going to go all the way back over here again. And we're going to start deforming these parts here to make this leg connect back to this. So I'm going to be taking this green corner and then holding shift to go down a little and then go inward. And then I'm going to take this point over here, hold shift and go inward. The reason why I'm doing shift is because it moves in a linear position. It kind of helps give me a bit more control. So imagine how, okay, for anyone who is wondering, why are you going down and inward? Because when we are tilting our body to the side like this, I want you to stand up and actually tilt your body. Like everybody. Come on, stand up. On okay? your feet. Stand up and actually tilt your body. I'm tilting. Notice how, um, notice how when you are tilting your body, the part that you are tilting your body is going down because that's how hips work. Your hip is going down while the other hip is going up. Your butt on the opposite side here, opposite side over here is going up and out. That booty cheek is going out while this booty cheek is getting sunken in. So in case if you're wondering why I am moving this part down, that's because that's how bodies work. <laughs> Gosh, I sound so condescending to say that, but like some people don't <laughs> understand like, you know, why and and that's why and that's why <laughs> if you ever get lost on how something should look just take a video of yourself or take photos of yourself and move your body in the positions that you want it to look and that's like a great guide to kind of help your brain conceptualize why bodies move the way they do <laughs> so with that being said we have this moving down and we can even move this part down just a little just a very tiny bit and then take this side and just move it in because technically your leg would be moving down a little bit but we don't want the foot to move down too too much which is why i'm not touching any of this because we're just tilting a little bit and we're gonna go to the hamburger sign click on reflect motion Oh, I was just going to ask if we could do it with everything we already did. Yes, we can. And we're going to reflect horizontally. And now, look at that. We don't have to do any extra work. So now, you want to hit Control S to save your work. Because we are now done with Body Z. Oh, we did it. Yes. We are now done with all of that. So now we can focus the rest of this stream on eye blinking. And now we're going to start doing the eye close. So... We're gonna just click on like any part of the eye. It doesn't matter which one. I just wanna open up the IR warp contents. Under IR warp, if you remember, we made an eyeball R warp. I want you to open that one up. And we're gonna click from up here 
we're gonna hold down shift and go all the way down to iris we're gonna click on all of that okay and then we're gonna go down to ir open we're gonna click on this under the parameter and we're gonna click on the two dots and now you can click off here the one and the zero represents opened and then closed we're gonna first start off with moving the main eyelash down so a typical rule of thumb when you're doing eye open and close is usually um i'm just demonstrating this you don't have the you don't have to follow this i'm just demonstrating usually okay. you take the main lash you move it down and you're going to deform it and stuff i like to move it about half way and a really important note is to have the end points here be very close to where they started off. So as you're going to be deforming it, you're going to be thinking, oh, I can't remember where this part is up here. What I like to do to kind of help guide me is I like to take the upper lid, hit control C and hit control V to duplicate a second lid. You're going to take not the one that you just copied because that's what's currently selected you want to go below it okay and hit s to solo it because it's going to be a little bit easier to to do this so remember how i said like there's two different ways that you could do this you could also do a warp deformer if you really wanted to we're not going to do that we're going to manipulate the actual art mesh itself and we're going to be using a deform path edit Ooh. this is just what i'm familiar with so this is what we're going to use for today's lesson. We're going to click on that. And you're going to notice you have a new little pen. Another pen tool. I'm going to start all the way outside of the art mesh area and click. Then I'm going to click at the point here. So we're done with this. We're going to click the deform path edit. Actually, sorry, not that one. We're going to click the arrow tool up here to deselect that. I'm going to zoom out. And now I'm just going to click outside here just so I can deselect all of that. And now I'm going to click the upper lid again and now currently we're on eye open so we're gonna go to the key down here by right clicking because this is gonna be our closed keyframe mm -hmm. and you see how there's a center dot right here this is where i'm going to left click and hold shift and move it down to about halfway <coughs> i like to move in the linear fashion so that way i'm more precise about it so yeah you, you said want... about halfway about halfway Make your best judgment for it. We're going to end up deforming it anyways. Okay. Now, the way I drew this art style, I tried a couple of different options on how to make it look good closed. This is what I went with. Um, so if you notice here, the way I did this, I maintained a lot of the eyelid property here. You notice how it's still pointed down? I could have made this go completely like, you know, smile face emoji if i wanted to it doesn't mm -hmm. look good with how i drew it this was the best way for me to make it look not cursed so this is the, gonna <laughs> be the shape that we're gonna try to achieve okay. as best as we can so how to do this well make sure i click on this here i'm gonna take this point right here i'm gonna hold it mm -hmm. i'm gonna hold down shift and move it down and then i'm gonna let go of that click on this point hold down shift move down and then I'm gonna let go a shift take my point and move it inwards a bit the next part that we're gonna do I think is gonna be the I whites and i'm only going to do this because i i think it's a little bit easier to kind of do the side and then the bottom lid so now we're going to take the eye whites and click on this and then press s to solo it just so i can see it and then we're going to click on the key down here this is going to be really easy you're going to hold down alt and you're going to go up to the little red box up here and then mm. you're going to drag it down oh. all the way until it's really really like thin like this and now we're going to let go of that we're going to hover over the red box until it looks like the little movie tool we're going to click on it hold shift and move it down a bit and now we're going to take the deform path edit and we're going to just draw a couple of points here I'm going to do four for now and, and that's fine and then we're going to click on the arrow tool 
I'm going to check this little red box. I'm going to click on that because it gets rid of that red box because it's kind of distracting. And now I'm going to take the eye whites and just kind of follow along the line of the main lash. So it's where it's like the edge a bit and just kind of curve it just like that. And then click on the side here. Press S again to get rid of the solo mode. And now let's see how that looks. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now let's go back to the eyeball R warp and make the iris appear again. Just so we can see how that all looks together with the iris there. And look at that. It disappears. Now we just got to have the side lash and then the bottom lid go up with it. This is probably as simple as we can go with it. And it's not the end of the world. Again, you can take quite a while trying to get as much precision as you want. And you can see how this could take a bit, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is like the general base of doing eye closed. All right, so we're going to take the eyeball R warp, not the actual mesh itself. The warp. Eyeball R warp. Eyeball yep. R warp. Okay. Yep. And we're going to go to the close keyframe and we're going to go to the center, hold shift and just move it down slightly. Not too much, just a little bit. And there you go. You have a more natural eye open and close. Yay! You're done. You did it. You did the eye close. It looks so good. Yes. Now, you did it. Oh, goodness, that took <laughs> three hours. <laughs> Holy. So, Cora, yeah. compared to lesson one, how did you feel about <laughs> lesson two? Honestly, this one, like, there's a lot of new things to learn, but it's once, like, seeing it being done and doing it myself, it's not that bad at all. It's really, like, kind of straightforward, like, the auto, um, what is it called? The auto mesh? pen that we use. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The auto mesh generation. The, yeah, the yeah. the former brush. Yeah, there's there's lots of tools that you can use. And what's kind of when it's your first time um with Live 2D, I remember when I first <laughs> I remember when I rigged my first model. It it <laughs> there's things that are just wrong with its neck. I, I don't know what happened to her. Like <laughs> Oh just, no. Yeah. Um <laughs> It takes a lot of practice to kind of get things the way you want them to be. And it can be very frustrating the first time. Like how you had, had accidentally deleted your iris. The, even Yeah. Like that stuff like that happens. That's why it's always important to have different copies whenever you're going to do something new. It's not that uncommon um, to have multiple save files. But um with that being said i would just like to say thank you so much my core for being my student for this again please everybody make sure you follow her on my core not found on both twitter and youtube i would like to just say thank you so much to live duty cubism for sponsoring today's uh video and uh Cora, did you have any final like words or like advice or just anything you want to share about your experience today um final words are um, I have fun and I appreciate you taking the time teaching me and I appreciate just being here. I really am, you know, it's opened my eyes a lot and I'm excited to kind of do more with this. Heck yeah. Open the eyes. Poor base town's eyes. I'm there. <laughs> hey, you see my word play. Yeah, exactly. All right, everyone. Well, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. And yeah, with that being said, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And remember... Everything reminds you of something. Bye, everyone! Bye!